So the thing about having pets is because we've taken them into our lives, our houses and our worlds, they don't really get the option to go hunt for their own dinners. And that's where we come in. So we go out and head to the pet store and try to choose food for our animals. And we are presented with aisles and aisles of beautiful looking foods that have pictures of happy dogs and idyllic farm scenes, beautiful juicy cuts of meat, wild cats hunting. And we think, hey, this food is definitely going to match what my animals need. But do they really? No, they don't. So here's everything that you need to know to be actually sure of what you're feeding your animals. Turn that bag around and look at the ingredients. The first thing that we're going to look at is in what order they're listed, because obviously the first one listed are going to be present in higher amounts. And while that's true, yes, they're listed in order of amounts, but this is before they're cooked. So guess what happens when you cook it and dehydrate it to make the kibble? The amount of meat now is a lot smaller because the meat has lost the majority of its weight, which was water, while the cereals and grains and other powders that are added have maintained their weight. So there is actually in proportions a lot less meat and a lot less of the fresh ingredients than we originally thought. So we need to keep this in mind when we're looking at the label. And of course, I have a trick for you that you can use when you are at the store and you kind of want to read a label on the fly. But before we go through that, we really need to understand what we are reading. So what some of those words means that are written on the label. They're a lot simpler than you think, and they can be really easily decoded. The name of ingredients on the label and what they have to mean is actually controlled by the AFFCO, and they have very strict rules. So meat is just what it says. It will contain muscle and muscle can be the general skeletal muscles, or it can also be the heart, the esophagus, the tongue, and the diaphragm. Generally speaking, it can be called meat, and that means that it's farm animals, or it can specify which animal it is. Oh, and keep in mind that according to the AFCO, fish and chicken are not mm. considered meat. Chicken is considered poultry, fish is considered fish. But if you're a raw feeder, you know that we can count chicken and fish as muscle meat, and we can feed it kind of as meat. The next up is meat byproducts. Now that doesn't sound very good, but it's actually not so bad. Byproducts are all of the clean internal organs. So if you're a raw feeder, you're basically feeding this already in smallish amounts, so around 10%, sometimes 15% of the diet of your animal. And these can be in commercial foods as well. So as with meat, Meat byproducts need to have the species specified unless it's a farm animal meat. Of course, we also have poultry byproducts, which unlike meat byproducts actually can contain bones, feet, and heads. Again, if you're a raw feeder, you know that this is normal and that we always add this to our animal's diet in smaller amounts. So, so far so good. And then we have the word meals. The AFCCO states that meals can contain blood, hair, hoof, horn, hide trimmings, manure, stomach and rumen contents in such amounts as may occur unavoidably in good processing practices. What are good processing practices? I'm sure that we've all seen pictures or videos in some documentary of what happens in a slaughterhouse. It's not exactly the cleanest place and it's not exactly the kind of place where it's easy to keep things separate. So I don't like the idea of feeding my dog and my cats meals because they may contain all of these things in small amount. And how small is the amount? So now that we've seen what the ingredients mean, let me go through a really easy trick on how to read these labels very quickly on the fly when you are in the grocery store or in a pet food store. The first thing that we're going to look at is in what order they're listed, because obviously the first one listed are going to be present in higher amounts. And while that's true, I told you there's also a sneaky thing about this. So yes, they're listed in order of amounts, but this is before they're cooked. So guess what happens when you cook it and dehydrate it to make the kibble? The amount of meat now is a lot smaller because the meat has lost the majority of its weight, which was water, while the cereals and grains and other powders that are added have maintained their weight. So there is actually in proportions a lot less meat and a lot less of the fresh ingredients than we originally thought. So we need to keep this in mind when we're looking at the label. Now here's my thought process. The first thing that I do is check if the words meal, powder and flour are present. Now meal, I already said, I don't like it. We, there can be protein powders or meat powders or meat flours used. They are not high quality and I would prefer not to feed my animals that. The next thing I look at is oils. Now animals need good quality fat in their diets and good quality animal fat should be called that, fat. Animal oil is 
rendered fat. And we know that rendered fat can be really deleterious to our animal's health and it can cause pancreatitis. Unless the manufacturer is adding a small amount of fish oil at the very end of the label as a supplement, I don't like to see oil at the top of my ingredients. So seeing oil in the ingredients is a big no-no. The next one is carbohydrates. Now, no matter your stance on it, our animals do benefit from a low carb diet. So I don't like to see any carbohydrate sources in the label on the back. So any kind of flours, any kind of cereal, potatoes, legumes, I'm very, very weary. And I will only accept it if there is maybe one or two, and if they are quite far down on the list of ingredients, because as we said before, they don't contain so much water to start with. So their weight is actually will make up more of the food than some of the fresh meat. So by now, if I still have the bag in my hand, that means that I'm looking at some good quality food. The last thing that I need to look at is actually the most important thing, which is what kind of protein source. I like to see whole names, basically what I would find at the grocery store if I were shopping for myself. So beef, lamb, whole eggs, salmon, all of those are wonderful options. I actually do the same for other ingredients such as berries and vegetables. Now, I actually prefer to give berries as a snack. They're a very good option and they're very good toppers actually if you have to feed a kibble diet. So I would prefer to feed it as a snack, but if they are present in whole amounts and with whole words, not powders or flowers, but actually cranberries or blueberries, then I'm okay with that. And finally, I look at the unreadables the ones that we can definitely not decode and, and we don't have to. What I do is I look at how long the list of unreadables is. If it's fairly short, one line or two, then I'm okay with it. But if it's very, very long and it's more than half of the list of ingredients, then I would prefer not to feed it. So at this point, if the bag is still in my hand, then I ask myself, is this the right food for my animal right this moment? So I always have to think that every season requires different ingredients. These questions and more I've put into another video that I'm going to link for you over there so that you can also get a sense for some of the things that you need to watch out for to choose amongst the bags that have actually made it through all of that selection. If you made it this far, give us a like and help us spread the word to other pet owners who are also looking to figure out what exactly they're feeding their animals. Thank you for watching. Give your animals a kiss from us and um, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.